we will do some basis on routes law and uh, this video will cover the vapor pressure lowering and uh, it will cover the solutions which obey routes law the ideal solution and then it will talk about the solutions which show positive deviation from routes law and solutions which show negative deviation from routes law so before going into the quantitative analysis of routes law let us un understand routes law and see what is this vapor pressure lowering consider the pure solvent the molecules are arranged as shown in the diagram there and the top one is the gas phase the below the one which is below is the liquid phase so it is possible that under normal conditions some of these water molecules escape out into the gas phase and in the figure i have shown some six molecules in the gas phase these molecules will exert a pressure on the liquid phase below and this pressure is the one we call as vapor pressure now consider to the same solvent i add some solute that's a figure number 3 and the uh, red and the green uh, dots over there can represent the solutes these hinders the water molecules to escaping into the gas phase and you can see that i have lesser molecules in the gas phase as compared to the figure number 2 and hence we can say that the vapor pressure is lowered and uh, this diagram uh, doesn't has any solute particles in the gas phase because this is an example of a non volatile solute we are again going to do qualitative properties but this is going to fo uh, focus only on vapor pressure lowering the vapor pressure lowering as actually defined by something called as routes law routes law states that pressure of a solution or the vapor pressure of a solution is equal to mole fraction of the solvent times the uh, vapor pressure of the pure solvent so uh, i get p1 equals x1 p1 zero now we know that the mole fraction of the solvent x1 plus the mole fraction of the solute x2 is equal to 1 therefore the equation 2 can be replaced as uh, instead of x1 i can write it as 1 minus x2 so i get p1 equals 1 minus x2 p1 zero when you rearrange the equation i will uh, get the change in vapor pressure that is delta p is equal to x2 p1 zero or in other words we can just say that vapor pressure depression or vapor pressure lowering is equal to the mole fraction of the solute times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent so you can notice that this is different from routes law routes law talks about not the depression it talks about the vapor pressure of the solvent and the vapor pressure of the solution and uh, the end equation delta p is a vapor pressure lowering where we take the mole fraction of the solute so we just learned that the addition of a solute lowers the vapor pressure of the solution now the solute can be of three types number 1 it it can be a non volatile solute and it does not dissolve air into ions for example sucrose or it can be a volatile non volatile solute that dissolves air into ions and then the third one it could be a volatile solute like ethyl alcohol c2h5oh so in case of a non volatile solute while doing the calculations when the moles are calculated take it as is so you don't have to multiply by anything but in case of a non volatile solute we have to multiply it by the number of ions it forms for example non volatile solute the dissolve is into ion we have to multiply it by the number of ions it gives for example if it was sodium chloride i have to multiply by 2 calcium chloride i have to multiply by 3 it will form three ions one calcium and two cl and in case of a volatile solute just like ethyl alcohol both the solvent and the solute will be on the surface and hence when you calculate the partial pressure the contribution from both the solutes and solvent should be considered therefore the total pressure will be equal to the partial pressure of the solvent plus the partial pressure of the solute so if i apply routes law there p equals p1 equals x1 p10 the partial pressure from the solvent plus P2 equals X2 P20, the partial pressure from the solute. The application of whatever is written here, some of some questions are solved in video number four. Please refer to that. 
Now look at uh, let us look at some solutions and some deviation from Routh's law. So the first kind is an ideal solution. These are solutions that obeys Routh's law. That means if uh, whatever is the pressure predicted by the Routh's law, it, that's what we get it even when we calculate it. And these are the ideal solution means if I call the solvent as A and solute as B, after I mix the solvent and the solute, the solvent particles does not differentiate between the solute particle and the solvent particle. Or in other words, the interaction between AA or the interaction between AB is the same. And therefore, for the solvent, it doesn't make any difference. There is no extra interaction between the solvent and the solute. And some of the examples are benzene and solvene, heptane and hexane, ethyl bromide and ethyl iodide. Or in other words, the molecule looks almost the same. The difference between heptane and hexane is just one CH2. And same way with benzene and solvene, there is a difference in the presence of one extra CH2. So they look almost the same, therefore they form ideal solution. Now let's look at the second one, the positive deviation from Routh's law. So it is possible that when I mix up two uh, solutions, the vapor pressure which we calculate is more than what is predicted by Routh's law. So this is the case when the solvent-solvent interaction gets reduced. So for example, what I mean by that is consider a mixture of ethanol and water. Water when present alone can form two hydrogen bonds using the two oxygens it has. But in the presence of ethanol, some of the hydrogen bonds of water are broken and it forms an hydrogen bond with uh, ethanol. So, because of the bulky C2H5 molecule in ethanol, the number of hydrogen bonds in water gets reduced. So, because of this, more water molecules can escape into the surface and hence the vapor pressure increases. Or in other words, if a solute is added and that solute disturbs the solvent in such a way that some of its interactions are reduced, then we get a positive deviation from Routh's law. Some of the other examples are benzene and methyl alcohol, carbon disulfide and acetone, and chloroform and ethanol. Now let us look at the next deviation from Routh's law, the negative deviation. So in case of the negative deviation, the vapor pressure is less than what is predicted by Routh's law. Or in other words, the AB interaction increases. That means the solvent and the solute start interacting with each other. For example, consider a mixture of chloroform and ether. Individually, chloroform uh, doesn't have, it is just only polar interactions and uh, ether it has not much interaction with each other. But when I mix it together, the polar hydrogen atom in uh, chloroform and this ether on the oxygen we have a lone pair so this lone pair and the polar hydrogen atom start interacting so because of this the uh, the, uh, the solvent molecules are held together inside the uh, solution and they do not escape out and hence the vapor pressure becomes less and another example is chloroform and acetone the interaction between uh, chloroform and acetone is more than the interaction between chloroform, chloroform and acetone, acetone. That's the reason the vapor pressure gets lower. 